I'm Andrea Paul. I'm here today to discuss one of our NCLEX questions from our NCLEX question bank. So I'll just go ahead and read the question and then we'll discuss it. So a nurse is assessing a client who has a gunshot wound to the chest. The nurse should identify which of the following as manifestations of a pneumothorax. So this is one of those select all that apply. So you will select anywhere from one to all of the options in this question. The options are tachypnea, deviation of the trachea, bradycardia, decreased use of accessory muscles, or subcutaneous emphysema. So we'll go through each of these and kind of explain. So first, um, you know, if someone has a, a patient has a gunshot wound to the chest, there's a risk of, you know, all kinds of injury to any of the organs in the thorax. And one of the things that may happen is a pneumothorax. And so the first option, which is tachypnea, that definitely would be something you would expect, um, not only because they have, um, you know, had a gunshot wound, but it's also a specific symptom of pneumothorax. Um, when you look at the other options, so deviation of the trachea, this also would lead you toward, if you didn't, you know, even if you didn't know there was any trauma involved, if you see deviation of that trachea, you'll start thinking about, you know, an injury to the lungs or um, pneumothorax it might be spontaneous or trauma related like it is in this case. Um, so specifically, when you when you look at um, a temp, uh, tension pneumothorax or a pneumothorax from, from trauma, you have an abnormal collection of air in that pleural space. So that's in between the actual lung tissue and the chest wall. And so if you have a tension pneumothorax, you'll be, first of all, short of breath because your lung is being compressed by this air that shouldn't be there. Um, but you'll also have, you know, other symptoms, hypoxia, chest pain. Um, you might have diminished breath sound. So when you listen on that side, of course, where the air is replacing where the lung tissue used to be, you won't hear breath sounds the way you should. Um, the, the trachea will be deviated away from the pneumothorax because if you think about it, the air is pushing, you know, if the air is pushing this way, everything's kind of being pushed and shifted this way. So you'll see even um, from the front of the neck that trachea being deviated to that other side. Um, you might have some hyper resonance when you percuss on that side because it's basically a bag of air and so you'll have, you know, it'll definitely sound different than the more solid sound you'll hear where there is lung tissue. Um, and then depending on you know, all of these depend on how severe this and how large the pneumothorax is. Um, some really, you know, severe trauma to those areas, you may see all of these things. Um, you may even have something called subcutaneous emphysema, which is one of the options, was the um, last option in this question. And so this is where you actually have air um, that's coming from that pneumothorax in entering sort of the subcutaneous, so inside of your, underneath the skin tissue, and that can be in the neck and the chest and the side, um, even down the arm. And so when you're feeling, it almost is like a bubble wrap, you know, kind of popping, crackling feeling in the skin, and that's air that's come from that pneumothorax and, and entered that, the skin. So that's definitely something you can see in a more severe case as well. Um, one thing that may, they may ask you related to this is, how would you treat it or what would you, you know, um, think would be an immediate treatment that might help the patient, um, and that's going to be a you know needle decompression. So that's where they use a large gauge needle to actually let that air that's trapped out, um, and you see like an instant um, improvement in that patient after you do that. So, thanks so much, and we'll see you in the next time.